Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel, guys. You've got your boys, Bert and Lanny, the Dividend, 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 Dividend Champions of the World. Guys, welcome back. Here's our Saturday recap video. You know, we've been testing out what we want to do on these Saturday videos. Uh, we're going to kind of piggyback off of last week and give you some big headliners. We're going to call it Headline Saturday right now. Um, you know, kind of like you want to headline the pay-per-view for wrestling. Um, ain't that right, Bert? Right. So what, help us out as we're experimenting with the name. Let us know what you think of what we're going to call it. Um, feedback's appreciated. But also, subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. Um, and pay attention. Stay tuned for tomorrow's video because we are going to announce the winner of our swag contest because last week, our last Sunday video got over 400 likes. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss to see if you won the swag. That's right, guys. And we love it. We love getting the emails and pictures and tweets of you guys showing off the swag. So, you know, definitely do that when you get mm -hmm. this DD swag. So let's um, talk, let, let's yeah, talk yeah. here, Lanny. Let's talk what happened in the week. We're going to cover five stories, so we're going to jump right in there. Uh, I think the first one, the most important, is, is involves the economic news of kind of what's going on in the market. Everyone, we're getting through earnings release. That's happened over the last few weeks. But a lot of people this week had their eyes on inflation. What are the metrics telling us with inflation? So, Lanny, what was some of the news and what were some of the things that came out of all the releases from this week? Yeah, you know, obviously the grand scheme of it all is that inflation, I mean, it's still up from last year. It's still up versus April of last year, but that it's lower. It's not up your 8 to 9% plus from 2022 to 2021 that we saw last year. It's up, you know, depending on what they adjust, we'll just say it's up, but up by a very low amount that there. it's looking like the interest rates might be working. Um, you know, the, the interesting part is, is that, you know, labor markets right now are still strong. Um, unemployment rate is still low and unemployment claims are still low. So uh, it's kind of an interesting time period because that would give signs that maybe future, you know, increases are happening or could happen in the future if the consumer is still strong. And that's why you haven't seen the market just take off at the release of all of this, because every time there's some news that might let you think the economy is cooling and the interest rates are going to come down, another story happens that shows something stronger in the economy than expected. So you might just need to maintain or possibly increase these rates. So it's interesting how it's been a mixed bag, but this was a good week. The CPI was lower than expected. So this was the first week where it felt like there are signs that things are coming down and it's working. So that was the first big headline. Lanny, it's been a few weeks since we talked about a West Coast bank too. You want to talk to us about headline number two? Sure, sure. And, you know, and again, guys, expectations right now on the CME group, F, you know, FOMC meeting website is showing a 100% indication that the Fed will keep rates the same at the next meeting that they'll have here. Uh, but yeah, yeah, to get into the second headliner, guys, we're going to talk about banks. We're going to get right back into the banking sector because PacWest, PACW, ticker symbol, they are still making big headlines. And you better believe they're bringing their friends with them with Western Alliance, Zions. Huntington has been mentioned quite a few times lately, though not to you know give scare to anybody. Um, but there are a few banks that are in the same articles and releases about where they're at from a deposit retraction based on the earnings release that Bert just mentioned. Um, and not only that, but a lot of the banks that are under the microscope are also releasing current updates about what they're currently you know, experiencing, even as of last week, that first week of May. So PacWest, the stock price continues to stay below five. We've seen you know, a lot of this happening, 20, 20, 30% plunges to 50 to 80% increases back down so you've definitely been riding the millennium force here for those that are from ohio that know what i'm talking about um but yeah their deposits actually fell almost 10 percent during last week um but they're trying to you know assure the community investment community that they have over three times the amount of you know you know borrowing capacity uh, liquidity measures to cover the uninsured deposits of about five billion so about 15 to five right now. Um, they've been able to do that by pledging additional assets, i.e. loans to the Fed 
Um, and then it's not an, a one for one deal. So they've pledged a little bit over five billion to secure almost four billion more in borrowing capacity. So they're trying to say, like, hey, news, we're gonna we can be fine. But all this news, which is getting very frustrated, I'm very frustrated because it's the news that is driving a lot of these depositors to take funds out. So the media right now is just on a on a frizzy right now. Yeah, and that doesn't help here at all. It doesn't make this process any easier. And that's where, to your point, you're kind of getting the the roller coaster, the up, down, up, down, up, down. And that's been the frustrating part for PacWest and a lot of the other banks that are trickling through because it just doesn't stop at PacWest. That's not where the news ends. It's suddenly PacWest, it's happening. Let's look at all the other banks that look just like PacWest and start attacking and start going after it. So I think that's the unfortunate thing, why you heard what you said, Lanny, with the bank, other banks that are swept up in all this too, your Huntington's, because nobody knows who's going to be the focus next and who might have a slight run on deposits. But what's nice is PacWest, at least as you highlighted, is pulling some levers here to be able to get some emergency liquidity and keep some cash in the bank to prop it up, which is what could not happen for Silicon Valley Bank in the moment. It's at least a slower process. Yeah. You know, and again, guys, you know, right now the two things that, you know, I would say that the either short sellers or the news and media are attacking is, you know, you're looking at your uninsured deposits and how much can they cover of the uninsured deposits. Not even talking about how much they can cover from their entire deposit base, but more on that because I'm a nerd later. Um, but they're also, you know, looking at you know, kind of what is happening in their deposit base, because I mean, you usually you're not living on borrowing. So you kind of live on low cost deposits. So if those go away, then if things can get very difficult for an institution, let me just say that. But that was the second headliner. Now, Bert, I think there's a great segue into the third headliner because it still has to deal with banks. Yeah. So with the reports being released on what happened with Silicon Valley Bank, what kind of happened with First Republic? People are saying, how can we prevent this into the future? What can be done to help mitigate this in the future? So potential changes to stress testing, potential different ways that um, potential short sellers that are gone. But the big uh, band in the banking industry, which has been talked on, none of these are final ideas. But the big one is, how are you going to start paying for these? Like, What's one way to do that? So that's where the regulator is starting to come in, where all banks today pay an assessment. Uh, for the FDIC, they contribute to the fund that the FDIC uses to bail out these institutions when they come in there. The new idea that was floated around and still hasn't been approved yet is a new special assessment based on uninsured deposits. So that's really, uh, it's an interesting theory and an interesting idea because if there, it's going to cost more to have these regulated, you're going to pay more to have these uninsured deposits, you should charge more because maybe that will help the bank steer clear from them keep those ratios in line which will prevent future bank runs it's an interesting theory and an interesting way to potentially help slow down these types of situations in the future so again a nice special assessment fee you know the biggest banks are going to be would be paying it because the biggest Mm -hmm. banks are the ones that hold the most uninsured deposits so it's protecting the community banks who really you know I know locally there's a lot over here in Northeast Ohio that have less than 5% as uninsured deposits. Yeah. Definitely not anywhere near the billions, let alone even the tens of millions. So, you know, why hurt the little guy when it's the big, the big, the big banks that are kind of in the fiasco? Yeah, no, that's right. So it's interesting. We'll stay tuned. We'll keep everybody updated what's going through there. But let's move out of the banking. Let's stop talking about the Fed for a little bit. Let's talk streaming. No, we're not talking Paramount. No, we're not talking Warner Media. It's yeah. Disney's turn to step into the streaming yeah. war. Come on, Bob Iger. Yeah. And Bob Iger um, released earnings, and it just didn't meet expectations. There's nothing around that. Um, they lost more subscribers than expected, which was fascinating because you weren't sure where Disney was going to fall. Disney was always positioned differently in my mind than the other ones because of their content, because it's how it's tied in and having a four-year-old seeing how much Disney is seeing all the, the princess and all that. You can see how Disney gets ingrained in a family to help insulate you from some of these waves, but they they weren't above getting caught up in the streaming wars, losing subscribers as people watch their budgets and they deal with the increased costs. So that's now the question. People are losing confidence in Disney Plus and the ever-growing subscriber base and the revenue it's going to bring. How is Disney going to be able to avoid 
more losses and more financial impact that have hit Warner Media and Paramount in the future. That's the fascinating thing that came out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, lost more subscribers. I think they were down about 4 million subscribers in the quarter. Um, you know, they were close to earnings, close to revenue. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but, you know, can Bob Wright, can Bob Iger right the ship here? It seems like amusement parks are doing very well. Um, seems like they're reshaping and restructuring the company within ESPN, you know, the parks and then the, you know, Disney media, um, you know, again, this whole streaming business, you know, I don't know if it was during the pandemic where everybody just wanted all of the services because they had all of this cash. So maybe it was the big buildup to as many subscription services. Now it's maybe consumers are like, okay, yeah. you know, we have Disney now twice, one through like my phone plan, one through the first time we got it. And, you know, there's just a lot of, it's messy. It's the streaming yeah. world is messy. It costs a lot. And a lot of these places were funding it with the cheap debt that was available. So obviously, too, once interest rates shot up through the roof in the last year, you suddenly had to start thinking about, are these big, expensive productions going to be profitable? And when you slap on triple the interest expense on top of that, it suddenly changes your mind on, is this going to work? Is this not going to? So Disney losing subscribers, will they be able to fix it? That's the question. And last, but definitely not least, we're kind of getting out, of, we get out of the banking crisis. We might be talking to another debt crisis here as um, as we the U.S. approaches its debt ceiling limit and the ongoing negotiations that are continuing to happen. And um, they got stalled. They're getting put to the last minute here. We're running out of time. We're running out of cash. So that's going to be interesting to follow. Yeah, I mean, and we've all been through this before. We, maybe some of the you know, less than 20 something year olds that are watching us. Maybe you have it, but we've been down this path many times in the last 10 years. You know, we'll see what happens to that can see what the dent that gets kicked and uh, you know, what happens on the debt ceiling here in the United States. So yeah, that meeting was postponed now until next week to give more time for the staffers. But I believe it, or you correct me wrong. It's the big June 1st date, right? Yep, something always happens right before the deadline. It's just how how close they want to come to the edge before everyone gets cool, lets cooler heads prevail and then talks through things. So yeah. we'll yeah, see. So what do you guys think about yeah. the, the five headliners here? Let us know in the comments your feedback, you know, on the you know expectations with interest rates happening and inflation, how it's impacted you and what you see going forward. Let us know what you think about the banking industry and the FDIC special assessments. Um, in addition, let us know if you own Disney stock or if you've been buying the stock since the stock price is near its pandemic lows, which was in the 80s, low 90s. It's in the low 90s now. Again, we're recording this Thursday night, May 11th. So the trade in a little over $92 a share. So let us know what you think about Disney stock. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Give this video a big old fashioned thumbs up. And most importantly, just remember, if you're not with the diplomats, you're against us. Oh boy, guys, that was Bert and Lanny from the DD. Over and out.